Hey, this is Mark Williams of Swine Life. Today we're combining two videos into one to show you how we took these panels off, got the trailer insulated, and then turned around and got it wired right within the insulation before we put the walls right back up. First thing first, we gotta get this foam insulation up. As you can tell, we've already got it up, but we're gonna show you every step that we took to get the trailer where it is now. So let's get started. Now I've done a lot of research when it comes to what type of insulation I was gonna use, and I'm going with a foam board this go around. I looked at a lot of the foam spray and that's what I originally wanted to do, but I was concerned with condensation. We're kind of in a hot, humid area and I want this trailer to still be able to breathe. That way it doesn't sweat on the inside. Of course, we got a good AC to go on the rooftop. Should keep us good and cold in the summer and warm in the winter, but let's go ahead and start getting these panels off and see what we find. So we're gonna go ahead and start pulling all this trim off, get these sheets of plywood off the wall and get this trailer ready to be insulated. The first thing I have to do once I get all the paneling off, is I got some caulk and some spray foam. We're just gonna try to seal this trailer best as we can before we get the insulation on the walls. So it's day number two out here in this Mississippi heat. I'm working on the trailer. We got all the walls off, all the trim pieces, which let me go ahead and tell you, taking that trim off sucked. Now you can see the bare bones of the trailer, see all your stud walls, what we're working with. Now my next step is gonna be to get this trailer cleaned out and we're going to caulk all these joints, every crack, crevice, anything we see that might let moisture in this trailer, we're going to seal it up tight. So with any cargo trailer, they're not going to take the time and build it out like you would like in an RV or anything like that. So you're going to have to go behind these guys, fix some of these holes. It's just part of it. But I'm going to take the time to use a good caulk and a good silicone to get all these openings filled up, sealed up good. That way this trailer is going to be as airtight as possible and keep us cool in the summer and keep us warm in the winter. Of course, you can see some of this wiring hanging down. I'm going to get all that taped up, zip tied up out of the way. All our studs in these walls are on 16 inch centers. If I were to order another trailer, I would do the same thing again and it's your standard home stud distance so it kind of gives you idea if you're looking for studs in the wall hey they're on 16 inch center All right, so check it out guys. We got everything sealed up. Ran a small bead of caulk around the top of the trailer. Now I know this isn't 100%, but it's better than what it was. As long as it serves its purpose, we're just trying to seal everything up that could potentially leak. It rained today. I didn't see any leaks nowhere in the trailer, which is good. But we're gonna go around and double check right before we get ready to put this insulation in. These wires are just temporarily taped up. But we're gonna get them zip tied out of the way. Make sure they're nice and neat. Everything looks good though. One thing to watch for is where your trailer lights are drilled and through the trailer like for your running lights stuff. Stuff, make sure to caulk those up best you can. You don't want to get a ton of caulk or silicone in the hole. A little bit of foam spray on these narrow pieces. We'll get that trimmed up. Time to get some insulation in it. So as far as insulation goes, this is what I went with. Just a Pink Panther. It's R5 insulation, one inch thick. Of course, our stud walls are on 16 inch center. So they actually already have, I don't know if you can tell in camera, but there are cuts in it that are pre-cut. Now that's not gonna work for most trailer frames, but it does make it convenient. We're gonna get these cut where they fit good and tight, put a little bit of foil tape on them just to hold them good and tight in place until we get the walls put back in place. But that is what we're using and it's time to get to cutting. All right, we got all the insulation put in the trailer. It took me about two afternoons. It was kind of a slow process, but I took my time, got everything placed in. A few of them didn't fit as tight as I liked. I had some foil tape to hold them up until we get the plywood back on the walls, and that's the next step for us. I'm gonna get all the inside skins put back on, kind of get everything buttoned up. I'm gonna leave the top panels off until we get done wiring it. I'm gonna have all our receptacles above this. That way, if I pressure wash this trailer out, I'm not worried about getting those wet. All right, check it out. Got the wiring process started. All we're doing, Basically, you can tell I don't have any walls here, but I know my breaker panel is going to be in this area. So we're fishing all our 120 wire through the insulation and then we're zip tying it to the top to keep it out of the way. I'll have a piece of one by four, kind of a trim piece up at the very top ceiling once it's finished out to cover that up. That way I got good, easy access to it if anything ever was to come up. Kind of notch out the insulation a little bit. Got our boxes in place, getting ready, which those won't stay there. Those actually fasten to the outside of the plywood. Got a receptacle here, receptacle there. That's going to be where our queen bed lets down out of the ceiling. So we'll have phone charging porch stuff like that got a receptacle set there this is going to be a prep table for when we do contests it's where we'll basically do all our trimming box building got a couple receptacles in case we want anything on the table right there we're gonna have a coax box 
and another receptacle box in case I want to hang a TV right there. So one quick thing before we wrap this video up, you can tell I'm putting my sides back on and I'm upgrading the screws. Now this right here is probably a number six screw. That's what they use from the factory self tapping, you know, basic screw. Some of these were stripping out when I was taking them out. So what I'm doing is going to a 10, a little bit coarser thread should bite a little bit harder. What I can tell you so far, I'm able to get these walls a lot tighter and I do like how it's going. So I highly recommend upgrading your screws. All right, so we got the wiring done, got all our panels back up. I just wanna show you kind of a brief overview, how we got the trailer wired, some of the ways I ran the wiring and what we're working with. Just imagine a cabinet and a wall right here. This is where my breaker panel is gonna be, so I have all my wires ran through the wall right here, my 12 volt and my 120. If you look at the top, I'm gonna have like a piece of crown molding up there to hide all this wiring, but it'll be easy to take that trim off and gain access to any wires if I wanna add another circuit or anything like that. The bulk of my wires ran at the very top of the wall, and of course, we just kinda carve the insulation out, run it down to the receptacle. You get to the back of the trailer, you can tell we have two receptacles with USB. This is gonna basically be where our bed is when it lets down out of the ceiling so we can charge our phones. Got a 12 volt wire right in the middle to run just a night light or reading light, whatever you want to call it. Come around to the passenger side of the trailer. We have a simple 110 outlet with coax. We're gonna have a TV mounted up there. Right below it, you'll see two outlets. I'm gonna have a prep table in this area. That way if I really run an electric knife, a sous vide or anything for our contest, it'll be right there at it. Right above it, another 12 volt wire. We're gonna have a wall cabinet here and that 12 volt wire is gonna power the lights for the under cabinet lights. If you look right above the door and kind of zoom in, you can tell where I have all all my exterior lights and I'll show you how those are on the outside. Everything's tied on one circuit that way all my exterior lights on the cooking side where my awning's gonna be gonna be all on one switch. Right up here at the very top I have about 10 foot of wire coiled up that way when we get ready to put our awning on I'll have plenty of wire everything will be right there already wired for it. And of course as you look down the center of the trailer and ceiling I have my 12 volt for my fan in the bathroom as well as several 12 volt lights throughout the entire trailer. And of course on these hot days you know I had to get the air conditioning wire ran we'll be putting that up in a later video. That pretty much sums up the wire. Now I'm no electrician I had a good friend Brian come and help me wire some of this stuff up. I'm pretty good on 12 volts but I don't mess with that 110. Now I told you I'd show you my exterior lights these are just simple 10 inch light bars I got from Amazon for exterior of cargo trailers they work for camp Really, really nice lights, super bright. I'm pleased with how they work. Basically mounted with two holes, pretty simple to put on, no big deal. We got one halfway back and one right over the entry door. And then of course, right at the very top, which this light's gonna be removed once my own is on, but it was just put on there by the factory. I went ahead and wired it in, left it where it's at. So that wraps it up for this portion of the build. We done all of our insulation, got it wired, and got all our panels back on. The next step for me is prep this floor and get ready to spray it with a truck bed liner. Now, once we get ready to finish up the wiring and get our cabinet breaker box all that in, I'll bring y'all back with me and show you how we got all the switches ran. So that's a wrap for today at Swine Life. Y'all make sure to follow this build series. If y'all got any questions, shoot us a message on Facebook or Instagram. And as always, like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see y'all next time.